Have you searched high and low but failed to find the perfect art sketchbook with professional grade paper suitable for all different types of media? In this video I'll show you how to make, from start to finish, a beautifully bound, hard wearing, flat opening, hardback sketchbook with 300 gram, 100% cotton mould made, hot press watercolour paper. Hi, I'm Will J Bailey. This is a channel of tutorials and documentaries for artists and art lovers, with new videos every week. If you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out. You can find links to everything discussed in the description below. And by the way, if you want to learn bookbinding but aren't necessarily interested in making this exact type of book, keep watching. This tutorial will definitely help with other types of projects too. Also, if you want one of these sketchbooks but don't feel up to making one yourself, I sell them on my website. You can find the link below. So, as an artist and illustrator, I'm totally obsessed with sketchbooks. They're a key part of my practice, and as you can see from my shelf up there, I voraciously consume them. I keep three different types for three different purposes. For developing ideas, drawing thumbnails, storyboarding, making notes and so on, I use Art Plus pocket-sized moleskins. They're great. Well made, not too expensive, easily available, small enough to always have one on you, and the smooth 165 gram paper works really well with pencil. But moleskins are hopeless for wet media. The surface completely disintegrates with water. For quick sketching and life drawing, I use a hardback, smooth, 150 gram natural white A5 Stillman and Burn Epsilon sketchbook. They're just the right size for drawing, but still fit in my bag for using out and about. Unlike the moleskin, they're suitable for light washes, so I can use brush pen and water brushes with them. But if you push them too far, even on the Zeta version with heavyweight paper, the surface will break down. The third type of sketchbook I use is for practicing and experimenting with my drawing and painting. For me, it's a space for playing, learning and growing as an artist, without any pressure or preciousness. As you can see, I use various different types of media and techniques, including gouache and gold leaf, stippling with rotring isographs, charcoal pencil, Indian ink wash, watercolour and so on. And some of these drawings and paintings are taken to quite a high level of finish. To be able to do this, I need a product that's all purpose and incredibly robust. But after years of trying brand after brand, I couldn't find a commercial sketchbook well made enough and with good enough paper to do what I needed it to do. Moleskins and Stillman and Burn are great for what they are, but they're certainly not up to the task. You can buy watercolour paper sketchbooks for sure, but generally the paper is pulp based and machine made with cold press surface which I find too textured. So in the end I decided to make my own sketchbooks with the same paper that I use for my finished pieces, Fabriano Artistico 300 gram extra white hot press. This paper is mould made and 100% cotton, so it's incredibly stable and hard wearing with a beautiful texture. The hot press surface is brilliantly versatile, smooth enough to use with ink but with just enough texture for charcoal and suitable for highly detailed painting. It's internally and externally sized so you can properly use watercolour and gouache on both sides and it's heavyweight enough that warping is minimal. You can see that my sketchbook still shuts flat. Similar alternatives to Fabriano Artistico include Arches Aquarelle and Saunders Waterford 300 but there really isn't any substitute for this kind of paper. It doesn't come cheap, just the materials for this book cost over £20 and I suppose that's why the big manufacturers don't make them. So at the end of the day, if you want this kind of quality you have to go homemade and this is how you do it. To start with you will need to buy a bunch of materials. For a 40 page book you'll need 5 sheets of 22 by 30 inch paper, which is a standard watercolour paper size. You'll need a bone folder for folding and tearing the paper an awl for punching holes, waxed book binding thread, linen sewing tape, mine's 13 millimeters, a sewing needle, I use a standard size 18, two A3 book boards, mull, which is basically stiffened muslin, EVA glue, you can use PVA but EVA is better for conservation purposes because it's reversible. If you want to take the book apart later the glue can be dissolved with water. A small foam roller, a scalpel, 
a ruler, a cutting mat, scissors and a roll of book cloth. I use black Abelay buckram, which I think is basically canvas coated in a hard wearing water resistant coating. I would strongly advise against using any kind of absorbent material for this. For my first attempt, I used a cotton type fabric and it simply wasn't hard wearing enough. You'll also need some string for the headband and some plain 300 gram cartridge paper, Bristol board or something similar for the end papers. I bought most of my materials from Shepherds in London, which is a brilliant book binding supply shop in Victoria. I highly recommend them. Again, all links below. First, you need to prepare your paper. Unlike a lot of watercolour paper, Fabriano Artistico's watermark is on the reverse. I mentioned before that both sides of the paper are usable, however they do have slightly different textures, so you'll want each set of facing pages to be from the same side with the same texture. So, with clean dry hands mark each corner on the front of the paper, i.e. with the watermark on the rear, with a number in pencil, going round 1, 2, 3, 4. When binding a book, it's crucial that the grain of the paper, or board, runs parallel to the spine. All paper and board has a grain within it that runs in one direction. On a rectangular piece of paper, if the grain runs down the long side, it's called long grain, and if it runs down the short side, it's called short grain. Think of it as a bunch of sticks glued together in parallel. Bend them in one direction and the glue will flex easily. Bend them in the other direction and the sticks will be stiff. And that's how you check grain direction. Flex the paper. If it bends more easily while holding the short edge, it's short grain. If it bends more easily whilst holding the long edge, it's long grain. Fabriano Artistico, like many mold made papers, is short grain. It's crucial that the grain direction runs from head to tail, tail to head. Otherwise you will have problems with warping. This in turn limits the way that you can divide up the paper. This is how I've divided it. Okay. So with the paper front side up, so you can see the numbered corners, fold a piece in half along the centre of the long edge, so that the numbers meet on the inside. Place a piece of thin scrap paper on top to protect it from burnishing, and use the bone folder to crease it sharp. Then hold it down and use the bone folder to tear it in half. Fold both of these pieces in half across the centre of their long edge so that the numbers meet and similarly crease and tear them in half. You will now have four pieces of paper labelled one to four. Fold numbers one and three inwards so that the numbers are on the inside. Fold numbers two and four outwards so that the numbers are on the outside. Increase them all sharp. These four pieces of folded paper are called leaves. Slip number three inside number four. And number one inside number two. making sure the sharp edges are all at the bottom. These are called signatures, and all things being well, the fronts and backs should all be correctly matched. Repeat this process for the remaining four sheets of paper, stacking the signatures neatly on top of each other. This is called the text block. Take the top signature and make a pencil mark on the edge 1.5 centimeters from either end to show where the end stitch holes will go. Measure between these and divide by three and make two light pencil marks equidistant apart to show where the two strips of sewing tape will be positioned. Drape the tape over these and make four pencil marks, one on either side of each piece of tape to show where the remaining stitch holes will go and erase the light middle ones. This is now your template. Put the signature back on top of the text block and position it on the end of a table. 
Make sure the signatures are all perfectly aligned. Then place a couple of heavy books on top to flatten it down. With a ruler, draw six lines down the side of the text block to mark out the stitch holes using the top signature as a guide. Measure the width of the compressed text block and add 10 centimeters to work out the length of sewing tape you'll need. Then cut out two lengths. Remove the books and, using the awl, carefully punch holes through each pencil mark on the signatures. Now we are ready to stitch. Measure out and cut off five or six book lengths of thread. Any more than this and you'll probably get tangled. Thread your needle. Then stick it through the center of the thread and pull it tight. Place the first signature on the table and thread the needle in through the front right hand hole. Then, going right to left, come back out through the second in through the third out through the fourth in through the fifth and finally out through the sixth. Pull the thread through, but leave a few centimetres sticking out of the first hole. Place the next signature on top. Thread the needle in through the left hand hole and go back across in the same way as before, but from left to right, out of the fifth, in through the fourth, and so on, until the thread is poking out through the right hand hole of the second signature. Take the two pieces of sewing tape and slip them under the two loops in the centre so that they wrap around the text block. Then, Take the two pieces of thread at the end, pull them tight and tie them together using a reef knot. That's the standard knot that most people know I think. It's basically a shoelace knot but without the slips. Place the next signature on top and thread back across as before from right to left. With the thread coming out of the far left hole, you now need to tie it to the loop underneath using a kettle stitch like this. You thread the needle under the loop below, then back through and pull it tight. Now repeat this process for the rest of the text block, using kettle stitches at both ends. You will, at some point, need to attach an extra length of thread. To do this, you use a bowline knot, like this. Push one loop into the other, push the left thread through, then holding onto the end, pull in both directions and cut off the excess with scissors. Before we glue the spine of the text block, we quickly need to make the head and tail bands. Cut a rectangular piece of book cloth a few centimeters long. You can cut it to size later. Glue the back with EVA and wrap it around a piece of relatively thick string and leave it to one side to dry. Place the text block over the edge of a table or on a pile of books covered with a piece of scrap paper, with the spine just sticking out over the edge, making sure the sewing tape is secure and evenly positioned. Using a brush, liberally apply one coat of EVA. When it's touched dry, apply another, gluing on the head and tail bands at the same time, having cut them to the right size. Then leave to dry overnight. After this, we need to make and attach the end papers. Take two pieces of cartridge paper or something similar, cut them to the same size as a single leaf of your book, likewise folded in the middle. Again, make absolutely sure they're long grain. 
Moving the tape out of the way, glue a 1.5 cm line of EVA along the spine side edge of the top signature and carefully stick it down, then repeat on the other side. Next, cut out a piece of mull to wrap around the text block. The width should just run up to the head and tail bands and the length should just go past the sewing tape, so about 5 or 6 cm on either side plus the spine width. Glue the sewing tape down with EVA, then glue the mull on top. Once it's touch dry, glue the top of the mull as well to really get into the mesh and then leave it to dry. This is belts and braces stuff, but it helps to make the book really hard wearing. So now we have our finished text block, we're ready to make the cover. First we need to cut out our book boards and spine. Note that Shepherd's A4 boards are short grain and so not suitable for this. So if you do buy them from Shepherd's you need to get A3 and cut them down with a scalpel and cutting board. This is a bit wasteful but the boards really do need to be long grain. They should overlap the head, tail and fore edge by 5mm but the spine edge should be inset by 1cm. I cut my boards down to 29.1cm and 18.7cm. Before cutting out the book cloth we need to work out the distance between the boards, i.e. around the spine. So, holding the boards in place, take a piece of scrap paper and run it around the text block. Leave enough slack for an indentation on both sides for the hinges and a slight curve for the spine. Mark the edge of the board on both sides. Lay the paper flat and measure the distance between the marks. Unroll your book cloth on a table and place the two boards on top with a gap in between as we just measured. Mine was 4.7 centimeters, but next time I'll add a few millimeters for extra comfort. Cut out a piece of scrap board this exact width to use as a template and use it to position the boards in the correct place. Then draw around with a fabric pen or something similar. Mark 2 cm all the way around the boards for the flaps, then cut it out with a knife and cutting board. The spine of the sketchbook needs to be flexible, so make this out of card. I used 300 gram watercolour paper, but that's just because of what I had in the drawer. It should be the same width as the spine, mine was 2.5 cm. Cut it out and, measuring carefully, mark out where it will go, equidistant between the boards. Next. Using a scalpel and cutting mat, you need to cut out the corners so the flaps will fold around the board. Remove the first board and use a roller to apply the glue. Then stick it down. Repeat on the other side. Then remove the scrap piece from the middle and glue down the card. One by one, glue each flap and pull them tight around. Your cover is now complete and ready to attach to the text block. Mark the inside of the cover with a chalk pencil where the end papers should go, leaving a 5mm gap all the way round. Using the roller, glue one end paper and, very carefully but relatively quickly, attach it to the cover, making very sure it's correctly positioned. Turn it over and repeat on the other side. Slip a piece of greaseproof paper in between the end papers on both sides, place some heavy books on top and leave overnight to press. Et voila, your beautiful homemade sketchbook is complete. So what do you think? Have you made one? How did you get on? Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, please do leave me a like. 
My next video will be about how to professionally photograph your artwork. So again, if this is something you'd be interested in, make sure to hit subscribe. Until next time, ciao.